Richard Gere. Born. August 31, 1949, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. Birth name. Richard Tiffany Gere. Height. 5 foot 10 1.78 m. Richard Tiffany Gere is an American actor. He began appearing in films in the 1970s, playing a supporting role in Looking for Mr. Goodbar and a starring role in Days of Heaven. Gere came to prominence with his role in the film American Gigolo, which established him as a leading man and a sex symbol. Born, August 31, 1949, age 75 years, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, spouse, Alejandra Silva, M. 2018, Carrie Lowell, M. 2002-2016, Cindy Crawford, M. 1991-1995, children, Homer James Jigme Gear. Height, 5 foot 10. Parents, Homer George Gear, Doris and Tiffany. Siblings, Henry Janiszewski. David Gear, Susan Gear, Laura Gear, Joanne Gear. Humanitarian and actor Richard Gear was born on August 31, 1949, in Philadelphia, the second of five children of Doris Anna, Tiffany, a homemaker, and Homer George Gear, an insurance salesman, both Mayflower descendants. Richard started early as a musician playing a number of instruments in high school and writing music for high school productions. He graduated from North Syracuse Central High School in 1967 and won a gymnastic scholarship to the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, where he majored in philosophy. He left college after two years to pursue acting, landing a lead role in the London production of the rock musical Grease in 1973. The following year he would be in other plays, such as Taming of the Shrew. On screen, he had a few roles, and gained recognition in Looking for Mr. Goodbar, 1977. Off screen, he spent 1978 meeting Tibetans when he traveled to Nepal, where he spoke to many monks and lamas. Returning to the U.S., on Broadway, he portrayed a concentration camp prisoner in Bent, for which he received the 1980 Theatre World Award. Back in Hollywood, he played the title role in American Gigolo. 1980, establishing himself as a major star, this status was reaffirmed by an officer and a gentleman, 1982. In the early 1980s, Richard went to Honduras, Nicaragua, and El Salvador, amidst ongoing wars and political violence, he traveled with a doctor and visited refugee camps. It is said that Richard was romantically linked with Tuesday Weld, Priscilla Presley, Barbara Streisand, and Kim Basinger. In 1990 Richard teamed up with Julia Roberts to star in the blockbuster Pretty Woman, 1990, his coal reserve was the perfect complement to Julia's bubbling enthusiasm. The film captured the nation's heart and won the People's Choice Award for Best Movie. Fans clamored for years for a sequel, or at least another pairing of Julia and Richard. They got that with Runaway Bride, 1999, which was a runaway success, Richard got $12 million. Julia made $17 million, the box office was $152 million, which shows what happens when you give the public what it wants. Off screen, Richard and Cindy Crawford got married December 12, 1991, they were divorced in 1995. Afterwards, Richard started dating actress Carrie Lowell. They had a son, Homer James Jigme Gear, on February 6, 2000. Richard was picked by People magazine as one of the 50 most beautiful people in the world in 1991, and as their sexiest man alive in 1999. He is an accomplished pianist and music writer. Above all, Richard is a humanitarian. He's a founding member of Tibet House, a non-profit organization dedicated to the preservation of Tibetan culture. He has been an active supporter of Survival International for several years, a worldwide organization supporting tribal peoples, affirming their right to decide their own future and helping them protect their lives, lands, and human rights. These tribes are global, including the natives of the Amazon, the Maasai of East Africa, the Wichi of Argentina, and others. In 1994 Richard went to London to open Herod's Sale donating his £50,000 appearance fee to survival. He has been prominent in their charity advertising campaigns. Family Spouses 
Alejandra Silva, April 18, 2018, present, two children. Carrie Lowell, November 9, 2002, to October 18, 2016, divorced, one child. Cindy Crawford, December 12, 1991, to December 1, 1995, divorced. Children. Hannah Dunn. Alexander Gear. Homer Gear. Parents. Homer George Gear. Doris and Tiffany. Hannah Dunn. Relatives. Susan Gear, sibling. David Gear, sibling. Laura Gear, sibling. Joanne Gear, sibling. Trivia. An accomplished pianist and music writer, in fact, he composed and performed the piano solo featured in Pretty Woman, 1990. Became a father for the first time at age 50 when his girlfriend, later wife, Carrie Lowell gave birth to their son, Homer James Jigme Gear, on February 6, 2000. Some of his earliest photos, known as headshots, were taken by boyhood friend and struggling photographer Herb Ritz. The people handling gear were so impressed with the photos that they began hiring Ritz for other assignments, and he is now a top photographer. Trained for five months for the tap dance scene in Chicago, 2002. Turned down the role of Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, 1987. Has since said that is the role he regrets passing on the most. Agreed to a small role in the HBO film and the band played on, 1993, despite the prevalent belief in the film industry it would be detrimental to his career. Subsequently, stars like Steve Martin, Alan Alda, Phil Collins, and Angelica Houston were willing to appear. Was a member of his high school student council, gymnastics team, lacrosse team and ski team. Gear's middle name, Tiffany, is from his mother's maiden name. A Buddhist for over a decade, he was banned from the Oscars once after making anti-China comments on the air at the 1993 ceremony. In the three films that made him a star days of heaven, 1978, American Gigolo, 1980, and An Officer and a Gentleman, 1982, his role had been turned down by John Travolta. A guitar aficionado since his youth, he is an avid collector of electric and acoustic guitars. Some of the ones he has are a 1958 Gibson Flying V prototype, formerly owned by Albert King, 1935 John D'Angelico Axel, formerly owned by James DeQuisto, 1931 Martin D28, 1953 Fender Telecaster, 1960 Gibson ES335 TD, 1954 Fender Stratocaster. Counts Julie Christie as the cinematic crush of his youth. His first break came in 1973 as Danny Zuko in the British stage version of Greece. When the Chinese government invited him to one of its film festivals, he agreed to go with two conditions, that he was allowed to bring his own interpreter and that he would stay in Taipei, Taiwan, during his visit. The government agreed and Gear went to the festival. Jodie Foster said of him, A lot of actors think acting is a girl's job but Richard finds something sensuous in acting, frequently works opposite Diane Lane. They have starred in three films to date, The Cotton Club, 1982, Unfaithful, 2002, and Nights in Rodent, 2008. Co-owner, with wife Carrie Lowell, of the Bedford Post Inn, in Bedford, NY. The Inn has eight rooms, two restaurants, a yoga studio a meditation center. Turned down the lead role in Die Hard, 1988 which went to Bruce Willis. On an episode of The Graham Norton Show, 2007, he recounted a trip he made to Borneo to visit the Dayak tribe. It was in the desolate part of the jungle with a treacherous drop-off from the plane. When he arrived, they excitedly greeted him by exclaiming, Officer, gentlemen, repeatedly. Though he's been nominated multiple times for a Golden Globe, and once for a Screen Actors Guild Award, to common indicators, for an Academy Award nomination, he has never been nominated for an Oscar. By the age of 14 he was a great trumpet player and gymnast, president of the Jeer Foundation, founded in 1991, the non-profit organization focusing on international humanitarian issues, with emphasis on Tibet. Received a gymnastics scholarship to the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where he majored in philosophy. He dropped out in 1969 to pursue acting. He has English and small, distant amounts of Scots-Irish, Northern Irish, Welsh, Dutch, Scottish, German, and French ancestry. He has deep roots in the state of Pennsylvania, and is also a Mayflower descendant, 
with American roots going back to Massachusetts of the 1600s, has twice played a fame-hungry lawyer based in Chicago, first in Primal Fear, 1996, as Marty Vale, then again in Chicago, 2002, as Billy Flynn. He didn't get along with his leading lady Deborah Winger during the making of the hit film An Officer and a Gentleman, 1982. She publicly called him a brick wall, while he said there was tension between them. Jodie Foster said of him, A lot of actors think acting is a girl's job, but Richard finds something sensuous in acting. Frequently works opposite Diane Lane. They have starred in three films to date, The Cotton Club, 1982, Unfaithful, 2002 and Nights in Roddenth, 2008. Co-owner, with wife Carrie Lowell, of the Bedford Post Inn, in Bedford, NY. The inn has eight rooms, two restaurants, a yoga studio, a meditation center. Turned down the lead role in Die Hard, 1988, which went to Bruce Willis. On an episode of The Graham Norton Show, 2007, he recounted a trip he made to Borneo, to visit the Dayak tribe. It was in the desolate part of the jungle with a treacherous drop-off from the plane. When he arrived, they excitedly greeted him by exclaiming, Officer, gentlemen, repeatedly. Though he's been nominated multiple times for a Golden Globe, and once for a Screen Actors Guild Award, to common indicators, for an Academy Award nomination, he has never been nominated for an Oscar. By the age of 14 he was a great trumpet player and gymnast, president of the Jeer Foundation, Founded in 1991, the non-profit organization focusing on international humanitarian issues, with emphasis on Tibet, received a gymnastics scholarship to the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where he majored in philosophy. He dropped out in 1969 to pursue acting. He has English and small, distant amounts of Scots-Irish, Northern Irish, Welsh, Dutch, Scottish, German, and French ancestry. He has deep roots in the state of Pennsylvania, and is also a Mayflower descendant with American roots going back to Massachusetts of the 1600s, has twice played a fame-hungry lawyer based in Chicago, first in Primal Fear, 1996, as Marty Vale, then again in Chicago, 2002, as Billy Flynn. He didn't get along with his leading lady Deborah Winger during the making of the hit film An Officer, and a gentleman, 1982. She publicly called him a brick wall, while he said there was tension between them. He played the title role, had top billing, had more screen time and earned a larger salary than her, while hers was just a love interest role. Still, he reacted badly when he realized that she was stealing every scene. She was nominated for a Best Actress Oscar while he wasn't nominated at all. Thirty years later, they patched things up when she presented him with an award at the Rome Film Festival. Named his son, Homer James Jigen. Jigen means fearless in Tibetan, is very active in AIDS fundraising, ex-wife Cindy Crawford used to collect the clothes he wore in his early films, and bought the white naval uniform he wore in an officer, and a gentleman, 1982, at a celebrity auction, became a father for the second time, at age 69 when his third wife Aleandra Silva gave birth to their son Alexander Jir in early February 2019, on the November 16, 2007, episode of Live with Kelly and Mark, 1988, Aka, live with Regis and Kelly, he cleared up the fact he is not vegetarian, but has not eaten red meat for 30 years. In 1993 People magazine didn't name a sexiest man alive, but named he and his then-wife Cindy Crawford as sexiest couple, was accused of having affairs with Priscilla Presley and Kim Basinger and tell all books penned by Presley's ex-boyfriend Michael Edwards and Basinger's ex-husband Ron Snyder, quotes, I don't want to be a personality. When I am there, Tibet, I am very happy. The Tibetans radiate. They literally send out light. His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, generates love and compassion to every human being. He has committed himself to that. I haven't made that leap yet. I haven't given up self-aspiration. I still love making movies, on George W. Bush, we have a president right now, who lies constantly and gets away with it, apparently, on Agent Ed Limato, he was the bridge between old-time Hollywood and Hollywood present. Ed was a master at orchestrating all of the feelings correctly. He had a rare ability to read a script and see what could be. Pretty Woman, 1990, is something I never would have done. Neither is an officer and a gentleman, 1982. I had no interest in these scripts whatsoever. It was the same person knocking my door down on both of them, Jeffrey Katzenberg, first at Paramount, then at Disney, who was one of my first friends out here, and still is, at the point of Pretty Woman, 1990. I had been kind of out of things for a while. I consciously, had, 
just said, going off to do other things, and I fucked up my career to the point where, people weren't saying, well, let's get cheer to do that. I had to crawl a little bit to get scripts. Doing internal affairs, 1990, for instance, was a very difficult decision for me to make because, potentially, that could have been such a piece of sheet. It turns out to be one of my favorite movies, and best experiences, too. I'm still like this guy who, like, washed his dad's car. I don't feel like I'm some sort of rarefied species of creature. On Brooklyn's Finest, 2009, I read the script and I thought, this is really unusual. These three interlinking short stories, that don't really interact, but, they, somehow, like music, contrapuntally inform each other, in kind of a mysterious way. On his character Jesse Lujak from Breathless, 1983, basically the root of him is music, music manifested by his moods. He uses the energy and emotions of the things around him to his own purposes. There's not guilt in him. He refuses guilt, he refuses despair, he turns despair around. He's a funny kind of character, he's not the kind of person you'd bring home to your mother and father. He'd be pocketing things, he doesn't see possessions as being personal. He has an outlaw mentality we haven't seen for a while. On why he starred in The Mothman Prophecies, 2002, the emotional stuff was rich. In the beginning, my character's in the perfect job, he has a beautiful wife, they're talking about babies, they're buying a house, everything's great and then literally in the middle of laughing, there's a car accident and she's gone. Now if you put that on top of the metaphysical story of, is there anything out there, then you have something that has a lot of power, on Hatchie, A Dog's Tale, 2009. Reading it captivated me immediately. It was very emotional and tense, even though I'd never heard of the story before that. My first thought was, I don't know if I want to act in this, but I certainly want to make it and help it along. In 2015, I love almost everything Ingmar Bergman did. I came out of that era, the 60s and 70s, so all that and Michelangelo Antonioni and Federico Fellini are just great. Rainer Werner Fassbinder was a friend of mine and I loved all his films, too, and Werner Herzog. That whole time was when I was trying to figure out who I was, and stretching myself, and those are all the films and filmmakers, that meant a lot to me. In 1993, I've always maintained that actors are best when they find characters that are congruent with the emotions they're going through at the moment. In 1993, my wife doesn't understand why I'm a sex symbol. She says I don't look different from a guy on the street. In 2012, reflecting on working with Deborah Winger and an officer, and a gentleman, 1982. I was delighted, she was perfect for the part. She has a really interesting quality. Again, I haven't seen this film in 30 years. But she is, she's really a kind of true heart in the camera. It's very hard to be as kind of open and unguarded and nice. You know, a nice person and kind of a genuine person, and true heart on camera. That's not an easy thing to do. She's able to pull that off. I could never be that way. I was too complicated. There were too many things going on. Just the straightforward presence is an extremely difficult thing to do. There doesn't appear to be any sort of basis for any of this. I have a feeling something hidden is at work here that will someday see the light of day. I keep asking myself where all this personal enmity between George Bush and Saddam Hussein comes from. It's like the story of Captain Ahab and the great white whale from Moby Dick. We have to say, stop. There's no reason for a war. At the moment Hussein is not threatening anybody. It'd be different if he was staring somebody down with a loaded gun in his hand. But there doesn't seem to be any indications whatsoever that this man poses an immediate threat to anybody. America has never paid any attention to other people, so it's absurd for Bush to say that it's all in the best interests of the Iraqi people. If the United States marches into Iraq without the backing of the United Nations, that will be done entirely without the backing of the American people. On U.S. President Donald Trump, here's a guy who's obviously, Benito, Mussolini. How is it possible that people would be supporting this guy? You can try to find reasons. It's about how disillusioned they are, how afraid, how confused. Trump is a demagogue, a clown, but people like clarity. Here's this guy who says, I'm going to fix this problem for you. It doesn't matter how, I'll just take care of it. He's finding villains everywhere and then telling people he'll get rid of them. We'll get rid of the Jews, the blacks. Anyone that we perceive as a problem, we'll get rid of. This is how it starts. Intelligent people aren't seeing this. Don't make the mistake of thinking it's just idiots who are backing Trump. This kind of thinking is a slippery slope. On Susan Sarandon, she's one of the few actresses you can think of who, besides being a terrific technician, is also funny, sexy, and womanly. Susan's a very modern lady, 
and she never stops taking chances. Salaries. Unfaithful, 2002, $15 million. The Mothman Prophecies, 2002, $15 million. Runaway Bride, 1999, $13 million. Intersection, 1994, $7 million. Somersby, 1993, $5 million. No Mercy, 1986, one million five hundred thousand dollars the cotton club one thousand nine hundred eighty four two million dollars american gigolo one thousand nine hundred eighty thirty five thousand dollars plus back-end percentage points <laughs>